Good morning. Uh, this morning's lecture is entitled gold, Money and Gold in the 1920s and 1930s, Defending the Rothbardian Position. Murray Rothbard's book, America's Great Depression, uh, was published in 1963, um, which was a year after, I believe, the publication of Milton Friedman's book, Monetary History, Milton Friedman and Anna Schwartz's book, A Monetary History of the United States. Uh, in, in Friedman's book, he tried to rehabilitate the quantity theory. And in particular, he tried to use it to show how the Great Depression was caused by a deflation of the money supply. That was completely um, unjustified, and that was engineered by the Fed. And that the prior decade, decade the 1920s, was in fact not an inflationary decade at all. So that absent the Fed's deliberate decrease or contraction of the money supply, there would have been at most a, a small and short recession in 1929 to 30 that would have um, rapidly turned around into a recovery, as occurred in 1920-21. So Friedman was, at this point, attempting to get this view accepted by the mainstream. Okay. The mainstream accepted the Keynesian view that it was a collapse in the marginal of efficiency of capital, marginal efficiency of capital, uh, or in other words, uh, in investment spending, <clears throat> and also consumer spending and, and uh, an attempt to reduce the deficit that caused the uh, Great Depression. And Friedman was attempting to get his monetary explanation of the Great Depression ex um, accepted. And this was really um, the beginning of, of, the, of the monetarist counter-revolution against Keynesian economics, the appearance of, of this book. Now, Rothbard comes along and writes a book that's also free market, that's also anti-Keynesian, and that gives a radically divergent explanation of what went on in the 1920s. For Rothbard, the 1920s was extremely, well, it was indeed inflationary, and why the, the depression resulted in the 1930s. Uh, even um, more irritating to Friedman, he argues that the Fed was actually attempting to inflate the money supply, though unsuccessfully, in the early 1930s. So the, the, the monetarists have always, from the beginning, attempted to either discredit or marginalize um, Rothbard's America's Great Depression by ignoring it. But every once in a while, uh, a monitor will comment on it, and the comments are usually the same. First, uh, somehow Rothbard contrived uh, a, a, a definition of the money supply that made the 1920s appear to be an inflationary decade in order to apply the Austrian theory of the business cycle to the explanation of the Great Depression. Uh, and secondly, they also claim that Rothbard invented um, a um, view that the Fed was not try, trying to deliberately deflate the money supply or contract the money supply in the 1930s. And this all came to a head. Okay, but by the way, these, these generally were off-the-cuff off remarks. They, they were, weren't written down anywhere. Okay. Um, many Austrians um, actually accepted these monetarist criticisms of Rothbard's book, believe it or not. Okay. Yes, Rothbard suddenly came up with this very broad measure of the money supply, which in no way um, reflected the um, realities of the medium of exchange. And um, so Austrians tended to say, you know, accept that, because Rothbard did include, as we'll, as we'll see, um, life insurance uh, net policy reserves basically the amount of, of cash that someone could cash out by borrowing against his or her life in, in, in insurance policy. And also the fact that the money supply did decline severely in the early 1930s um, makes it uh, a little strange or, or makes it um, um, dubious that 
the um, appeared dubious that the, Fed, that the Fed was actually trying to inflate the money supply. Isn't the Fed all powerful? Okay, can't the Fed simply increase the money supply, you know, ad libitum or at will? So, as I grew up in the Austrian movement, I would I would hear these criticisms of Rothbard, and I would see that that some of my colleagues maybe um, would would accept these criticisms that Rothbard really went too far. In, in, in trying to apply the uh, Austrian business cycle theory. So uh, we have a, a, a bill of, of uh, or a um, set of criticisms advanced in 1999 by Richard Timberlake in The Freeman, and I responded to these criticisms. Uh, he wrote three articles, a trilogy of articles, in which he criticized Rothbard, and he also criticized some of the Fed and Treasury policies. And I actually defended all three. I actually defended the Fed in at least one of its policies and the Treasury in one of its policies in my response. So what I'd like to do is to, is, is to go over that debate. Let me just start by showing you uh, Timberlake's particular criticisms of Rothbard, okay, in his own words. He says first that um, Rothbard has contrived a new and unacceptable, or invented a new and unacceptable meaning for the term inflation. <laughs> Secondly, that he contrived the definition of the money supply to invent a Fed-orchestrated inflation of the 1920s. Uh, thirdly, that um, Rothbard somehow mismeasured the central bank's monetary data. And lastly, that Rothbard misunderstood the nature and operation of the pseudo-gold standard that was controlled by the Fed uh, after 1933. Okay. So I want to defend Rothbard on these points. Timberlake also goes on in these three articles, and I'll, I'll touch on this, to say that the U.S. Treasury's policy of neutralizing gold inflows, um, as well as the Fed's policy of, of sharply increasing reserve requirements in the mid-1930s, um, led to uh, or Im aborted uh, an economic recovery that was just beginning, okay, and it resulted in a recession within the Depression, the recession of 1937-38. Okay, so I'll comment on that also. So as I said, um, Timberlake begins by claiming that Rothbard proceeds on, 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 on a new and unacceptable definition of inflation, meaning that Rothbard made this up. It, 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 by, by, by expressing it in this manner, you would think, well, no one else in the, in the history of economic thought has ever used th this type of, of definition of inflation. Um, well, let me start with that point. Okay. Rothbard's definition was simply that the increase in the money, uh, that, that inflation occurred when there was an increase in the money supply not consisting in, not covered by, that is, an increase in gold, okay, and those are his words, okay. But, as I show in, in, in my response, this is really an old and, 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 and a venerable um, definition, okay. This definition uh, developed out of the controversies between the currency school, the good guys, the sort of proto-Austrians, and the British banking school, okay, proto-Keynesians, in the mid-19th century. Basically, according to the currency school, which, uh, which triumphed uh, temporarily in the debate, uh, the gold standard was not enough to prevent inflations and, and, and recessions. Great Britain had gone back to a gold standard in 1821, um, and yet it had been plagued with the business cycle. Well, what the currency school point out, pointed out was this. If commercial banks were permitted to... Um, operate on fractional reserves to lend out a part of their depositors' um, money. What would occur would be uh, an increase in the money supply. That is, we would have fiduciary media, unbacked notes and deposits. And that would drive up prices in Great Britain. And as prices rose in Great Britain, uh, British citizens would begin to shift their purchases to foreign products, increasing imports. At the same time, since gold prices were higher in Great Britain, foreigners would reduce their purchases from Great Britain, causing exports to fall. So you get a budget that uh, you would get um, a, a balance of trade 
or balance of payments deficit in Great Britain. And the way this would be paid for would be by gold flowing out. Okay? The people who had to make purchases abroad or had to, had to, had to finance their purchases abroad would, would, would take their British pounds, their paper pounds or, 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 their, or their, their deposits, and go to the banks and turn them in for gold. So gold would begin to flow out of the country. Okay? The banks at that point would become a little panicky. Uh, they would be worried that there would be an internal drain developing as a result of the external drain. The external drain is, is gold flowing out of the country. As people saw this, they would get nervous about being able to redeem their notes and deposits, and therefore there would be the threat of bank runs, which is the internal drain. That is, uh, British citizens would attempt to withdraw even more gold okay, uh, by converting their, their, their bank liabilities. So to prevent this, what regularly happened was that the banks then would reverse their policy, they would cut back on their loans, um, the, the money supply would fall, and there would be a decline in prices in Great Britain. And with this decline in prices, you would have deflation and, and, and depression. Okay. Eventually, gold would flow back into the country because of the lower British prices uh, as the money supply shrunk, and you would, um, you would have a, a recovery eventually occurring, but then the banks would begin the same cycle again, because they want to earn interest. So as, 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 as deposits flow back into the bank, they would then engage again in injecting fiduciary media into the uh, economy, raising prices, and starting the cycle over again. So 